I would like to get going with the meeting now. This is Annette Arnold from the South Park Santa Rosa CBI. And this meeting is to cover the Parks Department and there would like to know what residents think about parks in the Southwest, the Southeast Quadrant. So please uh, feel free to speak up at the end when we get to the uh, question and answer period. And I am going to stop now and have this interpreted and we'll be back with you shortly. Bueno, me gustaría comenzar con la reunión. Este, um, soy uh, Annette del Departamento de Parques um, y querí, esta reunión es sobre uh, pues los parques en el cuadrante sureste de, de la ciudad y queremos saber lo que piensan los residentes um, y vamos a tener uh, pues uh, un momento en donde pueden hacerles preguntas al fin de la presentación uh, y ahorita um, voy a parar para permitir la interpretación. Great. I would like to introduce Jen Santos, who will be um, speaking to you about what is going on here tonight. Thank you, Annette. I really appreciate that. I'm Jen Santos, Deputy Director for Parks. If we want to go ahead and roll to the next slide, and I will see if we can get started. And so this is, um, if you need to use <clears throat> interpretation, here's the information to that. And I'll turn it over to our host. Do we have <clears throat> an explanation of this slide available? I have to apologize. I just dropped the, my paperwork and I need to find it. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll go ahead and read that, that portion um, and then um... Charles, um, our interpreter, will um, share it. Live Spanish translation is available at tonight's meeting. Interpretation services are being provided by Pablo and Charles with the International Effectiveness Center. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Once you join the Spanish channel, it is recommended that you shut off the main audio so you can clearly hear the Spanish interpretation. After interpretation, um, Jen will pick the meeting back up again. Thank you. Los servicios de interpretación se proveen por Pablo y Charles de International Effectiveness Centers. Se puede escuchar la interpretación en vivo en el canal de español. Para unirse al canal de español, Uh, puede hacer clic en el icono de interpretación que parece un globo terráqueo ubicado en la barra de herramientas de Zoom visible en la pantalla. Ya que según al canal de español, recomendamos que apaguen el audio principal para poder escuchar la interpretación claramente. Ahora lo vamos a pasar a Jen para hablar de los asuntos internos. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice already. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. <clears throat> and here I'll turn it back over to our meeting host, Annette Arnold from South Park CBI uh, to give us a little introduction. Annette, you're muted. Yeah, I was just going to say, you're muted if you're speaking in it. <laughs> so sorry. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm Annette Arnold, the project lead for the South Park Community Building Initiative. For all of those who do not know who we are, we're a group of neighbors who are working together to make South Park a better place for everyone who lives here. I believe that parks are critical for all of us, and they give us a place to get outside, to be with nature, to play sports, and have a place to get together. And Santa Rosa is blessed to have some great parks that we can all share. The purpose of this meeting is to ask residents what you hope to get from the slice of funds from the Measure M Pie. If you care about parks and recreational opportunities in our community, this is the time to speak up for what you want. The Parks Department is here and they are listening to us. So please let them know what you hope to happen here. Thank you. And Jen, if you wanna take it up from here. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. I really appreciate that. And um, we're looking forward to working together with the South Park CBI 
in the years to come. Uh, they're a new group for us and we're really excited to uh, be participatory with them tonight. And I wanted to take a moment to also introduce our other hosts that we have with us tonight. You'll see uh, host uh, Emily Bernard, I mean, Tim Bernard, Emily Ander, and Mary Lou Nichols. You'll see their names in the, in the presentation, but they are working behind the scenes uh, to coordinate interpretation, comments from the public, manage question and answers, and assist during the public meeting, and taking notes for follow-up needs as well. As members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone will be muted and camera will be off. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. And please know that the city of Santa Rosa is committed to a safe and inclusive environment, free from disruption, and we will not tolerate hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed if necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. And I wanted to give a little bit more um, information about uh, the presentation tonight and let you know that um, the website srcity.org parks for all is the place that anytime if you need to leave the meeting a little early, you can always go to that website, the survey, this um, meeting presentation, everything will be at this website if for any reason you can't attend tonight, but we hope you can stay. And I wanted to let you know from what I can tell so far, we've got our um, chair of the Board of Community Services, um, Carol Quant, as well as Vice Chair Terry Griffin and member Logan Pitts. These are all folks from the council appointed Board of Community Services, uh, which provides advisory to the council and record park staff. So glad that they're able to join us. And if I've missed someone, I'm really sorry. I can't always tell who's, who's joining us. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our host to describe how you can participate in tonight's uh, meeting. Yes, Jen, if you are calling in from a telephone or choose to speak during the public question and answer portion of today's meeting, for privacy concerns, host Nichols will rename your viewable phone number to caller with the last four digits of your phone number. At two points in the presentation, Jen will open the floor for questions and answers and public comment. Host Nichols will lower your all hands until the question and answer portion of the meeting is open. Once Jen is called for public questions or comments, the host will announce for the public to raise their hands if they wish to ask a question or comment related to this presentation. If you are calling in to listen to the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call on attendees one by one who have their Zoom hands raised. The host will unmute your microphone for your comment. A courtesy timer will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. Once you have asked your question or shared your input, the host will lower your hand and mute your microphone so your panelists may respond to the, your question. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you received. There is also the opportunity to ask questions throughout the presentation by clicking the Q&A feature in your Zoom toolbar and typing in your question. The host will monitor these questions and will answer them in writing as time allows, or will ask the presenters to answer them live at intervals throughout the presentation. Any questions not answered during the presentation will be addressed during the questions and public comment periods during the presentation. We ask that those listening on the Spanish channel, but wishing to make a public comment or ask a question to turn off or leave the interpretation entirely at the time you hear your name called so you join the main channel to make your public comment heard and translate it into English. This icon may now look like a circle with ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. You can then rejoin the Spanish channel at the conclusion of your comment to continue listening in Spanish. Thank you, Tim, I appreciate it. And I also wanted to thank our interpreters uh, Charles and Pablo, they're going to be helping us tonight behind the scenes, as well as our other uh, staff hosts. 
So with that, let's go ahead and go to the next slide and we'll get started. Um, and one of the reasons we're here tonight is Measure, measure M to talk about uh, what it is and what we're gonna do. So see if we can get the next slide rolling. Uh, but while that's happening, I wanted to let you know we do have an agenda for tonight. And part of that agenda is a overview of what is, what is Measure M um, and what can we do with it. We're also going to talk about uh, the citywide park system. What sort of um, what sort of parks do we already have? And specifically tonight, this meeting will go over some parks from the southeast quadrant as well, so we can get an idea of what is in the southeast quadrant of the city. What is the southeast quadrant? And we also have some surveys for you um, to talk about um, to provide us with your opinions about your priorities for where the funds for Measure M can be spent. And of course, last but not least, we'll go through our next steps. Um, but before we do that, I'm gonna check back in with our hosts. Oh, there we go, <laughs> to see if we could get our slide rolling. And um, just wanna thank our hosts. Um, this, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. It takes a lot of us to make this happen. So thank you so much. So that's essentially what I just said, what you see there on the slide. And um, I know I'm going to say this a lot tonight, but srcity.org, Parks for All. If you, wanted, if you want to learn more, if we're not telling you enough information here tonight, you can certainly check this website out. There's a lot of information available there. Um, next slide, please. So this, um, this is the overview of Measure M. So Measure M is a tax measure that was uh, passed in November 2018 with 72.6% support in the county of Sonoma. And what it is is an eight cent sales tax for 10 years, which start, we started collecting the tax April 1st, 2019, and it'll go through um, 2029. And the reason that this tax was uh, set up is that it can provide funding for the city of Santa Rosa for Rec and Parks needs. So the, the county is collecting the tax countywide and the city's portion of that entire tax is estimated to be about $1.9 million annually that comes to the city. And um, since we've been in this for over a year now, we, this is really close to the amount we are collecting, which is great news. So we anticipate that overall, over the entire 10 year part, uh, path, we'll have about $19 million. Uh, there's also a requirement for a baseline commitment and a fiscal oversight committee has been formed with citizens um, and we meet with them um, quarterly and go over um, what each agency is providing to the, um, as part of the overall Measure M project. The baseline commitment is essentially saying that these funds can be used to add to the things that the city is already doing. Um, but it certainly, it certainly can't be used, like the city couldn't take away money from things it's doing in rec and parks and use this money for that. The, the funds are meant to be a, um, a source for adding or updating or um, adding programs and maintenance. And we'll go over that in more detail later on. Um, hopefully that helps you give you a, a better idea of the parks for all measure. And certainly there's a lot more information on our website. Next slide, please. And so while we're waiting for that to happen, I just wanted to talk about the timeline. How long is it gonna take us to do this and what are we doing? So the first, um, first thing that happens is it was approved by the voters, year zero. And in the first two years, uh, we met with council and took a priority plan to council that was approved. That priority plan allows for the first two years of funding we'll receive as part of Measure M to be used on these three things, recovery of fire damaged parks and landscapes. So filling that gap between FEMA and other sources of funds we have to, to fund those fire damaged landscapes. It also funds the deferred maintenance uh, project priority list. So right now we've started with a consultant who is taking a look at all of our parks and giving us a priority ranking for their condition. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to receiving that later, receiving a first draft later this year. 
The third thing that was approved by council was what we're doing tonight. We're having community -wide, uh, citywide meetings about Measure M and collecting feedback from you all on what your preferences are uh, to tell us how we should spend these funds. And so what we're doing next in year three is to return to the Board of Community Services and City Council with an updated priority plan based on all the feedback that we're receiving um, at our Measure M meetings. We started our Measure M meetings just before COVID broke out. And so they've been on hold and we're super excited to get back out and hear from you all and collect this information. Um, so we hope to um, move forward to the Board of Community Services and Council as part of the budget priority setting this year. So um, April, May, and June, we plan to do the next steps based on the information we receive from, from you all. Uh, but that's certainly not the end of the discussion with the community. Years four through 10, we plan to um, continue engagement as needed to focus in on um, anything we might have missed, any folks we still want to engage with. If there's targeted areas that we need to have discussions with community, that's what we'll do. We're also going to have some priorities in June, and so we might need to come back out and have those future conversations with the community about what we should do next um, with those funds. So uh, this is a really collaborative process. It's an amazing opportunity for the residents of the city to really truly participate and, and tell us what's important to you all. So let's go to the next slide. And so here is, here is a list of the allowable uses that the tax measure, things you can spend the tax me measure mo money on. And what we did was we took each line item of allowable uses and we highlighted certain words within that text um, that are allowable uses to kind of get you thinking about what you might want to see done. So um, the, the parks for all allows uses for maintenance. So we can add to the maintenance we're doing in the city. You can, um, it'll pro provide for improvements or developments in the city related to recreation and parks. You can create or expand uh, parks and recreation programs, et cetera. We uh, provide programming is the next uh, section. So we have a lot of recreation programs in the city. You could certainly add to that. Um, decreasing fire risk is another item allowable use and improving trails along waterways and riparian areas. So we'll go through um, each line item of these to kind of get you thinking about it. So let's go into the next slide. So when we talk about maintenance, here's just a, a visual reminder of it. I'm a visual learner too. So sometimes the pictures help better than the words, but um, the specific use is for um, maintaining parks and recreation facilities to ensure safe, clean, accessible visitor experiences. So these are some of the things, um, so this is some of the maintenance uh, projects we have, repairing trails, removing um, uh, tree branches that become unsafe, cleaning graffiti, just examples for you. Next slide. And here's a, another allowable use to improve and develop athletic fields, playgrounds, restrooms, picnic areas and visitor amenities. So we given you some, we've given you some sample photos on this slide of, of what we mean by improvements. So the one at the top there, a place to play community park was um, a new playground that got installed a few years back. So just kind of give you an example of some of the things we're talking about. Next slide, please. The other allowable use is to create and expand parks, trails, bikeways, public art, and recreational and historical facilities. And so we'll give you a few, we gave you a few examples in the visuals here, Prince Memorial Greenway as a trail example, and we've got some art at Fremont Park, and of course our historic Luther Burbank Home and Garden. So just to get you thinking about the parks within Santa Rosa. Next slide. And the measure also funds planning and development of bike and path trails with connections to schools, community spaces, and regional trails as well. So here's some examples. Um, the picture on the, on the bottom, 
shows the uh, pathway over creek that directly connects to Madrone Elementary. Just kind of gets you thinking about what we mean by planning and developing these paths and trails. Next slide, please. And of course, um, the measure also provides for recreation, education, and health programs for the community. So if any of you have participated in any of the city's recreational programs, you know they are fantastic. And so this is the thing that you can think of if you want to see additional or expanded recreational programs. Next slide, please. And um, as mentioned previously too, that it also funds dec uh, the decrease of future fire risks, fuel loads, and invasive plants on city owned open space parks. And so here's some examples of invasive plants. I'm sure, I'm sure you've all seen these before. Um, as well as reduction of, of fuel risk is removing some of these heavy thick veget vegetative areas. Next slide, please. And last but not least, the, the measure also funds improvements to trails along waterways and riparian areas to benefit fish, wildlife habitat, and water quality. And uh, when we say riparian areas, if you look at that photo in the upper right, you can see somebody in the, within the creek. So the riparian area is essentially everything that you see within that up to that trail there um, within reason. So we're really looking at areas within the creek and adjacent to the creek um, when we talk about riparian areas for the most part. Um, and you've got, so we do have lakes and ponds throughout the city and, and, and creekways. So just to get you thinking about that. And so those are the exact allowable uses. So as you're hearing information and thinking about what is your priority, keep these in mind. Um, certainly it's not um, limited. These are just meant to open the door to the conversation about what priorities you might have. Next slide. And so before we, when we talk about um, how should we spend the Measure M funds, we wanted to also take a moment to talk about the funding sources we already have in the city. And so if you look at park projects, when we do park projects, those are funded typically by park development impact fees. And we collect those fees when developers developing residential units within the city have options for either um, working with the city to create a park or they can also pay in lieu fees, fees so that the city can use those fees to buy future new parks or improve existing parks, expand parks, et cetera. So when you see a park, a really big park project that's likely been funded from the park development impact fees. Occasionally we can use general fund um, funds. Um, this, will, this would have to be an ask. We don't automatically receive funds from the general fund. Um, and we also apply for at least two to three grants to year to try to um, really uh, grow the funds so we can use grants funds with the park development funds and get something even more for our park system. And if you look at our recreation programming area, that is funded through the general fund. Um, the staffing for that and the programs and the neighborhood services does have some funding from another tax measure, the measure O measure. And if you're looking at parks and recreation maintenance services, so if you see maintenance going on, that is funded uh, by the general fund. And then we have this section of deferred park and recreation maintenance. So when we think of that, there's a current example I can tell you about at Howarth Park. So at Howarth Park, we have some pretty significant maintenance issues on the tennis court. Uh, for whatever reason, we have a, a crack that's developed in that court that's getting really expansive. And it's, it's beyond a maintenance project, but it's certainly not a new um, park project either. It's, it's somewhere in between. It's one of those repairs that's really large. We don't have a specific funding source for this. Uh, we try to use a variety of sources when these needs come up and we um, do have conversations about how to fund repair and improvement of these and we make the we ask those questions. Should we replace is it bad enough where should we, we should replace it or should we use um, some funding source so we don't have a specific dedicated funding source for those larger projects that are just outside of maintenance and just below a full project. 
So hopefully that gives you a good sense of what's going on there with our existing funding. And I also wanted to take a moment, uh, folks often ask me, well, how much does things cost? How do I know um, what I should be prioritizing our funding on? And so just to give you an example, um, which is within the Southeast Quadrant, uh, for those of you that were participating in the Colgan Creek Playground Replacement Project, that uh, replacement of that playground, which includes removal of the existing equipment, new surfacing and playground equipment is estimated to cost at $291,000. And that's just for the five to 12 year old playground area. So that can give you a sense of, um, of the cost of things. Um, a lot of you may remember that Coffee Park has, um, was burned in the 2017 fires and we estimated its recovery to be about $5 million. And it looks like we're coming in at about $4.3 million to replace that park. And that's about a five acre park. So just to give you a sense of the cost of projects and the cost of things to get you thinking about uh, $1.9 million sounds like a lot and it, it is, we're so excited to have this, um, but we also need to think about it, um, where is it best used? So with that, let's go to our next slide. And this is a map of the city from the general plan. And so it's a little bit outdated because there is a process to update the general plan right now, but this should give you a good sense of an overview of the city. When I mentioned earlier that we collect park development impact fees, we often do a lot of the things that we do in parks by quadrants. And so these are just areas within the city. Uh, we call them quadrants. <laughs> the Northwest areas, zone or quadrant one, uh, Southwest two, Northeast is three. And what we're talking about tonight, the Southeast quadrant is considered uh, zone four. So it's just an area of the city that kind of helps us guide um, what we do um, as we move forward with things. This map shows in green and I, I know it's kind of hard to see on this map, the green because of the colors of the quadrants, but um, this will give you a good sense of, of where we mean when we mean Southwest. So we mean anything below Highway 12. Um, and when I say below, I mean South, <laughs> South of Highway 12 and anything East of Highway 101. And on this map, you can see some trees, some red trees. These are indicating future parks. We may own some of the land here, but they're not maybe not developed yet, or some of them we haven't even been able to purchase the land yet. But this is the idea or the plan. It doesn't signify a specific lot in the city. It's just saying that we, these are the areas where per our general plan, we should have future parks. And you can see in this map where the city has developed first and where it's growing and moving to by looking at all the new trees <laughs> in the Southeast, Southwest and Northwest areas. Um, there's only, I think, one tree left in the Northeast. So we still got a lot of building and things to do in the Southwest quadrant. Um, and the other thing that we want you to do with this map is to get a sense um, of where you might live. If you look in this map, what quadrant you might live in the Northwest, the Southwest, the Northeast, Southeast, or if you're, if you're participating from outside the city, uh, because we're going to be asking you <laughs> which area you live in in our upcoming poll. And so we want you to get a good sense of that. And um, we understand that not everyone is a good map reader. So just do your best when you're trying to think of what, ge what general area you live in the city. Kind of helps us understand um, when you prioritize your surveys, where the information is coming from and where we have the need. So tonight, if you live in the southwest or southeast part, um, you'll want to put that down. So let's go ahead to the next, the next slide. We are gonna start some polling. This should be pretty easy. We're just gonna ask you some simple questions about where you live and age and um, how did you hear about us, that kind of stuff, just to get us uh, familiar with using um, online or you know, participatory voting while you're in a Zoom meeting. So I am gonna turn it over to our hosts and they're gonna describe how you can participate in the upcoming polling. Thanks, Jen. All poll questions are single or multiple choice. The, you must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. 
The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question, etc. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll is available on the project website through April 8th. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and Jen will walk you through the results. Okay, so hopefully you can see that poll that has popped up on your screen. You can go ahead and start clicking and, 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 and answering the poll anytime. Uh, we've got just three or four questions, I believe. Yeah, four questions. So hopefully they're fairly easy for you to read and you gotta scroll all the way to the bottom, make sure you're clicking through all of them. And we'll give everybody just a couple minutes here to go through that and then you'll get to see the results live. Okay, I'm going to check in with our hosts and see how everybody's doing with participating in the in the poll. We can look at the results. We are at 75%, um, so 31 of 41 participating. Great. Are we holding steady or we got some more trickling in? We are holding steady. And just keep in mind that in order to submit your poll responses, you need to fill out the entire poll, <laughs> all four questions. So I'll look back to our host to go ahead and show the results. Um, when we've got everybody, we've got a good hold. There you go. So everyone should be able to see the results now. So we've got a lot of folks from the Southeast Quadrant, which is great. And we welcome those of you from outside the area. This meeting is open to everybody. And we're super happy that you're here. We've got a variety of age groups, which is fantastic. And the we've got 74 percent of folks visiting a city of santa rosa park or recreation facility at least once a week and it's always good for us to hear how you heard about this meeting because we always try to do our best so appreciate the feedback on that looks like most of you heard about us through city connections which is great okay so let's go ahead and close this poll and we'll keep going with the the meeting I know it's a lot of information, but um, these priorities are ultimately going to be really important to us as we make decisions going forward. So we want to give you a lot of information before you take our last poll. And OK, so we are it looks like are we on the next slide after the poll? 
there we go. So um, here's the map again. We just wanted to um, put that up again so you can kind of see we're going to look at uh, the citywide parks and then we'll zoom down in and look at south southeast parks. So here's another view of that map again. You can see the trees a little bit uh, a little bit a uh, little bit better as well as some of the green where we have parks in the city. So again, those red trees mean that those are um, likely future locations or areas for future parks, but otherwise you can see the, um, the parks on there. Let's go to the next slide. And the next slide is for those of you that like uh, lists better than the visual. This kind of gives you a sense of what we just saw, but in a list form. So citywide, we have 108 um, property sites, park sites, and a little over a thousand acres of of parkland, and so a community park type is is a park that's 20 acres or more. It's a big park where we have a variety of things that we expect people to travel to these parks and stay for quite a while. A neighborhood park, uh, five or six acres or less, and those are places where we anticipate folks to spend a little less time. But we've got some really popular neighborhood parks within the southeast, such as Martin Luther King, etc. So just to give you a sense of, of what's out there citywide. Next slide, please. And so zooming in on the Southeast quadrant, and we do have two slides for you here because uh, we couldn't fit, fit it all on one slide and still be able to read it. So just to kind of give you a reminder of what parks are within the area we call Southeast, um, we decided to put this slide together so you can see. So we've got Kiwanis Springs Park. It's not quite developed yet, so it still shows the tree, um, but it is there and available um, undeveloped. Uh, we've got Martin Luther King Park, uh, Dowenauer Park, Colgan Creek, et cetera, Galvin Community Park, the golf course, Creekside, Open Space, Matanzas Park is another little neighborhood park. It gives you a good idea of, of generally what sort of parks are in the southeast. Let's look at the next slide. The next slide is just moving up north a little bit higher and it's a different map. We've got different people working on this stuff, um, but you can get the sense of it. So there's Howarth Park, definitely one of the more popular, probably if not the most popular park in the city, um, also considered part of the southeast quadrant. And this quadrant also goes all the way out to um, Oakmont. And Oakmont doesn't have any public parks out there per se. It does have privately owned public parks <laughs> out there. And so we've got Flat Rock Park. If you haven't been there, that's a fantastic park to go see. Pater Springs, Park Trail Open Space, Farmers and Forth Trail, um, Hampton Woods Trail, lots of trails over in this area. So hopefully that gives you, again, a, a good sense of what we've got. Next slide, please. And here's our lists again, for those of you that are better with lists. And it kind of just gives you a good sense uh, overview of what's in the, in the Southeast area. Um, we've got Martin Luther King Jr. Neighborhood Park. Um, Howarth Memorial Park, of course, and Newhall Bike Trail, which is the trail that connects Martin Luther King Park out down that um, trail from the park. Next slide, please. And so again, here's, here's uh, parks by the numbers, so to speak. So overall, we had 108 parks and in the Southeast quadrant, we've got 25, 25 different parks and 428 acres three community parks and 12 neighborhood parks. And again, the community parks are the larger parks with the neighborhood parks being the smaller ones. Uh, next slide, please. So the other thing that I want to show you is um, amenities. What do we mean when we say amenity or park feature? What does that actually mean? And everything here is, is, is is what we mean. Playgrounds, soccer fields, restrooms, golf courses, amusement parks, dog parks, um, boat ramp. And speaking of dog parks, <laughs> I haven't seen this yet. Those are my dogs there <laughs> in the middle. So um, hope you enjoy that photo. Um, 
Anyway, so this is what we mean by amenities. Pretty much anything that you see, picnic tables, et cetera, in a park, that's what we mean by amenities. And so I know this was a lot of information and I appreciate your patience. We are gonna roll into our last poll next, I believe. And um, we do have a lot of questions for you. It does take a while to go through them. And um, question number 10, is that same list of allowable uses that we mentioned in the beginning. And number 10 is that it's got all of them there. We want you to give us at least your top three priorities from that question number 10. And again, we've got lots of multiple choice questions coming up. So it does take a while. There will be some silence on, on the part of staff while we wait um, for you all to fill out the, uh, the survey. But this is, this is where you get to tell us what you want. So I am gonna turn it back over to our host. They're gonna explain again how to participate and then we'll get started with the poll. Thanks, Jen, for those just joining again. All poll questions are single or multiple choice. You must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll, on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question, etc. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll is posted on the project webpage through April 8th. Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will be, appear immediately and Jen will walk you through the results. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And let's go ahead and get started with the poll. And after this, we have a question and answer period. So if you have a, a question that's still out there, we'll have live question and answer. So here you go. Go ahead and get started. You don't need to wait for me. You can go ahead and get started clicking in and taking the poll. But I will read each question just briefly. And, and then we'll stop talking and there'll be a little bit of silence, but we're still here. Uh, wanting you to collect, we wanna collect your information. So question one, how satisfied with you, are you with the condition of Santa Rosa Parks? Number two, do you feel safe when you're using or visiting Santa Rosa Parks? Number three, what park features do you use most often? And that's a multiple choice question. Number four, what are the most important qualities you would like to see in a park. And by themes, we had a question last time, somebody asked, what do you mean by themes? Uh, by themes, we just mean if there's nature theme or trains or something like that you wanna see, <laughs> that's all we mean. And number five, what existing park features would you like to see most improved in Santa Rosa? And I believe question five and six are the same. Yeah, part one, because we have a lot we have a lot. <laughs> so, uh, same question, just two park. Number seven, how often do you have gathering events at park uh, facilities? And I, this is pre-COVID, right? How often would you do this? Obviously, we can't do this right now, but before that. And number eight, how could your city of Santa Rosa Parks and Recreation experience be improved? And multiple choice question again. Number nine, what City of Santa Rosa recreation programs or activities do you currently participate in or have in the past? And number 10 is the big one. Number 10, how would you like to see Santa Rosa Measure M Parks for All funding prioritized? So you can choose up to three there. Um, we'd like to see your top three priorities there. And um, Again, you can go ahead and get started and click through and take the survey. Uh, we are going to um, take a little bit of time, about five minutes here, which doesn't seem like a long time, but um, you won't hear us walking through this. We'll go ahead and let you take these, the polls.
Okay, I hope everyone's enjoying taking the poll. I'm just going to check in with our hosts to see um, how folks are doing and if we're getting closer or need more time. Um, for the last poll, 31 of 40 answer questions, and we are at 32 now. Um, so let's wait 30 more seconds and see if we get a 33rd and then move on. Thank you. We'll just give it a minute. All right, I'll check back in with our hosts. How are we doing? Are we ready to see the results? I think we're ready to see the results. All right. Okay, this is great. So um, you can scroll through these to see the results for yourself. I'm just gonna, let's start. I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna do a little bit of um, verbalization of the results. But meanwhile, please feel free to scroll through and look at the things that you're interested in. Um, certainly, we are interested in question number 10. So I'll just kind of walk us through the results there. Um, so let's see. So number 10 is how would you like to see Santa Rosa Measure M Parks for All funding prioritized? And so it looks like 56% said that maintain parks and recreation facilities to ensure safe, clean, accessible visitor experience. And then we had closely followed behind 53% asked to create and expand parks, trails, bikeways, public art and recreation and historical facilities. And then 38% improve and develop athletic fields, playgrounds, restroom, picnic areas, and visitor amenities. And, oh, I missed, my screen is a little small on my side. I missed out at the bottom, 41% asked for improvement to trails along waterways and riparian areas to benefit fish, wildlife habitat, and water quality. So that's, that's fantastic. It's always great um, to give your opinions. And um, one of the things that we were excited about with Measure M was just um, hearing from you all. So even beyond the use of the funds we receive from Measure M, this data will help us understand where to use other funds as well and where to prioritize things within the city. Um, overall, it's really great information for us to, to hear from you. And so um, let's look at uh, number three real quick because we need to capture all the questions here. So I'm gonna give staff a little bit of time to do that. Um, but it looks like number three, which park features do you use most often? 66% said natural areas, 41% um, playgrounds and 47% ponds, lakes and creeks. And a little bit less at 28% was swimming pool and splash pads. Anyway, this is really fun and exciting for us. I hope you had fun taking this survey and I'm gonna check in with our host to see if they captured all the information. I think we're ready to move on, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. So we'll go to the next slide. The next slide, we're gonna give you a little bit of what we plan to do next, and then we'll roll into question and answers. <laughs> um, so for our next steps, all of this meeting information, the video, um, the survey, if, you, if for whatever reason you're having technical problems tonight, the same survey is available online. 
And so will the presentation, the presentation will be online too if you wanna hear it again. And the, um, the survey will be available to April 8th. And again, that's srcity.org parks for all. Um, so if there's anybody you know that still needs to take the survey or wants to participate, um, please encourage them to visit this website. The next steps in April are to collect and analyze all these survey responses we've received from all over the city and, and come up with some, some ideas based on your priority, priorities. We plan to present um, to the Board of Community Services in April or May, and then uh, back to City Council in, in June, likely at the uh, budget hearing. And then again, like I mentioned before, we this is not the end of the conversation. We anticipate um, working with our partners um, like Annette uh, through South Park CBI and some of our other partners that are helping us uh, with these ho hosting these meetings. It's, it's, um, it's more than just helping us uh, work through the information during the meetings, but it's also helping us uh, look at all the results we've collected and uh, having a second or another pair of eyes looking at things that we are doing. And all of this information will be presented at the Board of Community Services as well as City Council. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good sense of what's going on with Measure M, and I appreciate partici your participation in the, in the survey, and we'll roll into our question and answer period next. And for those of you that um, need, to, need to leave or don't have a question, you're welcome, you're welcome to leave. Um, after this, we'll just give you um, some contact information at the end of the question and answer period. So with that, I will turn it back to our host to describe how um, folks can participate in our question and answer period. Thanks, Jen. Once Jen calls for public questions and comments, host Nichols will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals wishing to participate in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. The host will then call one by one on those who have their Zoom hands raised. The host will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. A courtesy timer of three minutes will appear while you ask your question or make your comment. Once you have raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, the host will lower your hand and mute your microphone so our panelists may respond. You will need to raise your hand again if a follow-up question is generated based upon the response you receive. If you are participating in the meeting from the Spanish channel, we have an interpreter on standby on the English channel to assist during your public comment. If you wish to make a public comment, please be sure to pause throughout your comment to allow for interpretation. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your public comment as required by the Brown Act. For Spanish speakers, at the time you hear your name called, please turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. This icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. Interpreter Charles, can you please turn on your microphone to translate? Thank you. Host Nichols, are you ready for the first meeting attendee to ask their question or provide a comment? Yes, I am. Thank you. Anyone wishing to ask a question or make a comment may do so at this time by raising your hand in Zoom. It looks like we have several participants. Our first speaker is Richard Berg. Richard, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your comment or question.
Richard Berg. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to the next speaker until he can uh, get connected. I'm connected. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the, looking at the possibilities of Measure M funds, I want everything, and I'm sure many people do. So my question and comment is about the way you prioritize the priorities you hear from the public, since some things have a lot more leverage in terms of community access, uh, need, density, the number of people who are living per square mile in each quadrant or in each neighborhood. And so I hope that leverage is accounted for. And specifically with regard to the Southeast Greenway, this is an incredibly leveraged opportunity for the city of Santa Rosa. And the reason for that is it's a relatively dense neighborhood almost all the way along the Greenway. It provides access to several hundred, actually, if you count Annandale, several thousand acres of public space at various levels of development. So walking paths, bike trails, natural areas, playgrounds across the several miles of the Greenway provides local as well as long distance access to Howarth, Spring Lake and Annandale. And for that reason, I think it's really important that it be leveraged when evaluating how you distribute the funds since it's clearly a long-term project to develop those 29 acres. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. And I thank you for your comment. I wanted to clarify too that as we move forward with um, seeing what all the priorities are of the community. Um, it's, it's, I don't know yet if we're gonna be able to make that decision about um, everything that's gonna be spent with the funds uh, in the next um, few months as we go to council. It's, li it's likely that we'll start to narrow, narrow our selection as we move forward. And we'll probably have to circle back out with the community again to further refine what our selections are. So um, I, I don't anticipate unless we get a slam dunk with one particular item, which I haven't seen yet, um, that everything will be decided um, in the next few months. So hopefully it's an ongoing conversation and uh, all of that information will be at, on the Measure M website um, as we roll forward. Thank you. Our next speaker is Laura L followed by Robert Gazer. Laura, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Hello, my name is Laura Larque and I live in uh, South Park on the street of Rutledge, two or three blocks away from Martin Luther King Park. And I have been witnessing uh, the detrimental of this park, um, especially because it's in a working class neighborhood. And I um, agree with the previous uh, speaker in terms of uh, the density of uh, families living in each neighborhood. And while I agree, you need to save the golf course on Bennett Valley. I will require, or I will ask you to consider how many people live in that neighborhood in comparison to neighborhoods like South Park. How much families in that neighborhood need to have their golf course in comparison to renovating and expanding uh, Martin Luther King Park. I understand uh, the city rents the park to different uh, activity groups, such as uh, soccer uh, teams, uh, basketball teams, and we don't receive any of that funding to improve the park. And when families want to um, go to the park, they can't even be there because the, the, the entire park, park is used. The um, playground has been absolutely abandoned. We are plagued, we are uh, occupied by homeless and it has become very scary, very, very scary to attend this park. I work every day and I have to go to other parks 
because I cannot even attend or, or uh, frequent the park that's just three blocks away from my house. So I will implore you when you are making the decisions in terms of uh, what parks need more attention, look at where these parks are located, the number of people living in those neighborhoods, and uh, what are the needs of every single neighborhood in comparison, let's say Bennett Valley neighborhood in comparison to South Park neighborhood. What neighborhood needs better services? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Laura. Our next speaker is Robert Gazer, followed by Wayne Seaton. Robert, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your comment or question. Robert. Let's try again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, good evening. I am Bob Geyser, co-chair of the Southeast Greenway Campaign Committee. We are requesting that the city consider using Measure M funds for the planning, development, and maintenance of the Southeast Greenway. The city, Sonoma Land Trust, the Water Agency, Regional Parks, Land Paths, and our committee have all been working hard to acquire from Caltrans the unique Greenway property a two-mile corridor from Farmers Lane to Spring Lake Park. It is possible that the acquisition process for this 57-acre property may be completed by the middle of 2022. 47 acres of this land has been planned and zoned by the city for public parks and open space. The 29 or so acres between Montgomery High School and Summerfield Road would become a new city park and the 18 acres east of Summerfield would become an extension of Spring Lake Regional Park. We have secured the grants and donations to acquire all the parkland, but once the property is in the hands of the city and county, there will be many activities related to park development and maintenance that are eligible for Measure M funding. Eligible activities include vegetation management and other property maintenance, including reduction of fire fuels and invasive plants. And probably most important is preparing a detailed park development plan for the multi-use paths, bike paths, walking paths, trailheads, play areas, restrooms, picnic areas, natural areas, tree planting, art displays, educational opportunities, and some other public uses that have been considered. Uh, initial access improvements for public use maintenance operations and emergency response, and improving conditions along the three creeks crossing the Greenway to benefit fish, wildlife, habitat, and water quality. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Bob. Our next speaker is Wayne Seaton, followed by Sheila and Steve Bell. Wade in. Wayne Seaton, I'm enabling your speaking permissions. You may ask your question or provide your comment. Hi, uh, my name is Wayne Seaton. I'm the president of the nonprofit Santa Rosa Tennis Club. Basically, what we've done is try to maintain the uh, tennis courts at both uh, Galvin and Howarth Parks. We've raised funds along with uh, through uh, donations and and grants and uh, U.S. Tennis Association. And our concern is uh, maintaining the tennis courts there. Uh, we have a situation over in uh, uh, Galvin Park where when we've had heavy rains, uh, we have a aquifer underneath the courts which tend to uh, pressure, uh, the water pressure cracks the courts and they have to be resurfaced every three to four years. We're looking for funds to rebuild those courts with concrete. And our group was instrumental in raising the funds for uh, four courts uh, several years back. Uh, fund, uh, grants are, uh, are kind of hard to come by 
especially during this uh, pandemic that we've been going through. So our concern is uh, getting funding for those courts. And uh, I, um, I, my initial question was, uh, will there be any funds available for the next couple of years? Because I understand most of the uh, uh, our funding during the next two years is going to be limited to uh, repairing park uh, damages that took place because of the uh, wildfires. So that's my comment. We basically would like to see funds allocated for the repair of the tennis courts. You, that was brought up about Howarth. Uh, uh, that there is a big crack in the court, one of the courts over there. So there's another um, issue that we're addressing. That, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Our next caller is Sheila or Steve Bell. Sheila and Steve, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Great. My name is Sheila Bell. Thank you very much, Jen and Annette, for allowing for this forum. First off, um, you know, I've had an opportunity. This is my third of the Measure M meetings. And as we consider the parks in the southeast side of Santa Rosa, um, and as we look at its availability for the entire city and the use there, it's really apparent that the recreational opportunities are significantly impacted by weather conditions and by current maintenance of these areas. So to highlight a few areas of need, I'll start with the soccer area. The two soccer fields at Galvin are frequently closed uh, during the winter months due to rain closures. Soccer player here for 25 years. We used to be able to utilize the school fields, um, in particular, the all weather fields, but that is very limited now or unavailable at all. So that leaves really no soccer availability for youth or adult leagues, um, which is, is certainly a challenge for those who want to play the sport. Uh, so we would encourage uh, looking further at field maintenance, proper drainage, and the potential of converting one of the fields at least to an all weather field to allow for year round play would also encourage lighting at the soccer fields and enhanced lighting at the tennis and softball areas as well to allow for expanded areas. This is not just in the Southeast quadrant for usage on um, this it applies for the entire city um, for any of us who have used the, the bathrooms out there <laughs> adjacent to the soccer field and the softball diamond, they are in major need of repair and upgrades. Um, also would like to suggest a bus stop near Galvin Park to allow greater access from anywhere in the city to use those recreational facility amenities and perhaps even consider a water bottle filling station out there um, for all the park users to reduce any cross contamination. Uh, it's apparent from the maps that that green space uh, park area is an important area for our entire city. So as you look at prioritizing the Measure M monies, I hope that will be taken into consideration. Thank you very much for your consideration and your time. Thank you, Sheila. Our next speaker is Thea Hensel, followed by Lynn Carlisle. Thea, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. My name is Thea Hensel and I am co-chair of the Southeast Greenway campaign. Following up on all the attributes that the Greenway has that Bob Geyser suggested a few minutes ago, I want to talk a little bit about the connectivity opportunities that the Greenway will offer to so many residents of Santa Rosa and beyond. If you look to the west, going through the downtown Prince Memorial Greenway over to Roseland, it's an important east-west connection for people who are traveling to the parks, kids going to Montgomery High School, which believe it or not they do, from Roseland. And it, it really is important. I know all of us bemoan 101 dividing our city, but we do think that there are opportunities to make connections. The other thing that I think is really important that sometimes gets overlooked 
is Taylor Mountain has kind of become a crown jewel of the South. And even though it's not a, a city park, it is in this quadrant. It does offer amenities all around it. And there are enormous amounts of development going on in that area. And it's going to be coming more and more impacted with the need for developed parklands. There is, um, uh, I noticed in, in the bike head pedestrian plan, a Bennett Valley Road trail study. And I'm just wondering if that is active and if not, if it could be, because I think it's an important connection for people who live in the Kiwana Springs and South Park area to be able to access over across Farmers Lane to the Greenway and therefore up into Haworth Park. So I really think that we need to look at the connectivity of the access that the Greenway will offer to our hillside parks to where the people actually live. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thea. Our next speaker is Lynn Carlisle, followed by Ben Miller. Lynn, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. My name is Lynn Carlisle. And just a couple of comments. One, uh, the Greenway really is not in the city yet, and it is not considered a city park for this discussion. Not that it's not important, but it will have its consideration in the future. And then the other thing I wanted to ask the question, you have several slides of the golf course. Is that considered a park? And then I went to reiterate what Sheila Bell had said, that we do need to improve the lighting at Galvin for soccer, tennis, and softball. We would like to have a bus stop. This is a major community park, and it really should. It is very easy to get it on the bus route um, for Galvin and the golf course and the water bottle filling stations and the restrooms to be uh, cleaned up and rejuvenated. Thank you. And thank you for having this uh, kind of program for us. Thank you, Lynn. And just to answer your question about the golf course, if you recall the types of parks we have, um, the golf course would fall under the special use park. So I guess you could consider it a type of park, although certainly it's, um, it's specific to one activity. Uh, but it is a special use park along with um, the Royal Cemetery, Luther Burbank Home and Gardens is in a couple categories and our museum um, space back there is actually considered a uh, public space for park. So hopefully that helps you out and thanks for your comment. Our next speaker is Ben Miller followed by Arlie Haig. Ben? I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Yes, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Dr. Ben Miller. I moved here to California and specifically Santa Rosa in 2018 from Iowa. Um, it was a big move for me, uh, just being moving across the country. Me and my wife didn't really know what to expect, but we moved into the Quanta Springs neighborhood and. We're delighted to find Taylor Mountain there and all the recreational opportunities it had, was able to provide. We've since moved from that Kiwana Springs area, but actually are just over by the Jockey Club, so still fall in the Southeast Quadrant. Um, when I first moved here, I was out at Taylor Mountain a lot, um, getting into disc golf and recreation out there with the hiking and, and all the trails. And that's where I met some, some really nice people who, you know, I was out there playing by myself and they just kind of invited me in and took me under their wing and let me kind of join in and uh, into the camarader camaraderie with them. And I found out that they were part of this group called the United Flyers of Sonoma. Since then, some of these people have become my closest friends out here. Um, and I have such an eclectic group of friends through that. I know lawyers, healthcare workers, I know brewers and people who work in IT, I know teachers and uh, also CPAs who all have been a part of the United Flyers of Sonoma. So it's just a really great widespread group of people um, that are just able to be out there and be active. Um, and since then, they've even helped me provide some outreach to the community. Just in fact, tomorrow I'll be helping run a, a youth uh, introduction to disc golf uh, seminar with the Sonoma County Parks and the United Flyers of Sonoma out at Rakel Ranch. So getting that youth activation and more kids into the sport and showing them how they can be active and recreational, but also 
not necessarily so intense or uh, with the, in terms of what it does to your body or um, the, the requirements of equipment and things like that. Anyway, I would just like to advocate for the spaces that are currently being developed, uh, the Kiwana Springs neighborhood, those parks there. Um, to me, I feel like these would be great opportunities to introduce some very um, friendly, beginner friendly courses uh, for disc golf. These are commonly referred to as like pitch and putt courses where the par is a par three, but really, it's really just throw it once and then try to putt it and get it in. Um, I know of one course in, um, in Colorado, uh, in Denver actually, that is fantastic in the heart of Denver. It's the Johnny Walker Park there and it actually sits on just um, 17 acres of land. And uh, I think it actually can even be done in any even smaller areas. So those pitch and putt courses have been established in uh, urban settings and suburban settings and also provide for mixed uses of those parks as well. So I think it'd just be a really great opportunity to be able to develop that into those spaces that are really safe um, and for everybody to be able to use. I'm just gonna go over a little over on my time here, but I do wanna to mention too that you can see evidence of this in the youth community park over by Piner High School, where the United Flyers of Sonoma really embraced that and adopted it and helped to convert it from a homeless encampment to a place where there's people out there all the time looking out for each other, picking up trash, and just making it feel like a more welcome place than it had been in the past. So thank you again for the time and allowing me to go a little bit over and for your consideration. Uh, I appreciate that. And um, I don't know if you're still on, if you want to describe what, um, what disc golf is for folks. I don't know if everyone knows what that, what that means. Um, if, you, if you want to, I would much prefer you do it than, uh, than me, just briefly, please. Yes, I'd be happy to. It follows really the same kind of rules as uh, golf, traditional golf, in that you have a target that you're aiming for, um, you have a tee box that you tee off from, and there's a set par or a goal of score that you want to get to uh, on that hole. Most holes are par threes, but in bigger courses, there are par fours and par fives. Um, instead of using a traditional Frisbee, although they look like Frisbees, they're specially designed um, discs that fly, uh, they're a little bit more aerodynamic and fly further. Um, the, you can play with just a single disc, a putter, or which are typically softer and slower, um, but there are things akin to wedges and irons and drivers. Um, and we have what we call fairway uh, approach and uh, high-speed drivers. So there is a little bit of variety, but it's really easy to get started. Play it against sports and sports basement all have discs that you can buy and play an entire round with just one disc and at under $15. Thank you, Ben. And I just wanted to give that time a little bit so we could all understand what he means by disc golf. <laughs> so hopefully that helps you all. And I'll turn it back to our host. Thank you. Our next speaker is Arlie Haig, followed by Jennifer. <clears throat> Arlie, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and provide your question or comment. Hello, my name is Arlie Haig. I don't hear myself, but do you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, I have been involved with the uh, uh, South Park CBI group, and also I've been involved with the uh, Kiwana Springs Community Park development. And I have a question about the funding. Um, are, is Measure M the only funding that is being uh, bandied about or drawn from for these parks, for, for example, for the Kiwana Springs Park? Is can um, is are there funds to develop that park within a fairly you know likely got uh, timeline because I know it's been in process for so many years and people are waiting. No, <laughs> just kidding. Um, yeah, we are waiting, and it would be really nice to have funds go there. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thanks, Arlie. And I just wanted to let you know that the information we're collecting tonight will be used um, not only for Measure M, but any other funds we have to be able to leverage um, our, our strength and combine funds to be able to do more with what we, we have. So 
Um, there is there is funding in the measure uh, in the southeast quadrant um, for future parks, and we are developing a uh, community garden at Kiwana Springs Park that will be happening uh, hopefully this year. And so stay tuned for that. And as we get additional funding, we'll be looking to improve Kiwana Springs Community Park. Our next speaker is Jennifer, followed by Crystal. Jennifer, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Hi, my name is Jennifer Grau and I'm a resident here in the Southeast Quadrant. Um, in the Matanzas Park neighborhood. Um, and I was just curious, um, based upon the first poll results that we saw, um, the age definitely skews um, higher. And I noticed that, you know, timing wise, this is not the best time for um, families with young children. And I have a nine year old myself. And for several years, um, my parent friends and I have talked about what would be best for parks. Um, but I feel like those voices tonight at least are not being heard. And I was just wondering if there is any sort of an effort to do some boots on the ground surveying and finding parents who are in parks, uh, parents of young children who are in parks during the day um, and utilizing them to get their opinions and their comments. Um, because uh, with a meeting that starts at 5.30, that's dinner, that's, you know, now we're approaching bedtime for two-year-olds. Um, so I would love to know if that's been a consideration. And then also um, my daughter, who's almost going on 10, she's getting into those double digit years. Um, I would love to see uh, a focus at our parks on teenagers and how to include them more. Um, and just wondering if maybe that there, if there's any sort of an effort to reach out to student leaders at the various high schools around town um, to get their opinions and ideas of how parks could um, appeal and include teenagers more. So I, I appreciate that, Jennifer, great name. <laughs> I, um, I will say we have not considered yet walking, walking parks. Uh, we do have a relatively small staff, so it would um, take a pretty big effort, but we will absolutely include that. We would love to do that um, as part of our process moving forward. Um, and then we, we have noticed in some, just especially just looking at some of these South, uh, quadrant meetings, the, uh, we are paying attention to the age groups and we will be targeting um, schools and uh, wherever else we would be able to target to reach um, a wide variety because we really do want to hear from our youth, especially teenagers. We've had the best luck um, working with those groups through the schools. They've uh, been fantastic to work with and have allowed, have allowed us to, um, uh, participate in parent groups and things like that uh, virtually. Uh, but moving forward, we will absolutely be considering how to include those groups in our surveys going forward so that we have a complete um, look at the city. Hopefully that helps you out. And if I didn't answer your question, let me know. Um, and there is additional ways to get in contact with us if you have other further ideas. The other thing too is uh, this survey and information is available to anybody anytime, 24 seven on our website. So if there's any way we can get the message out to folks, um, certainly love to hear from you. So thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Crystal followed by Adam Dominic. Crystal, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Hello, my name is Christelle England and I live on the corner of Hoenn and Yalupa. I've got four kids, one 19 and the other three are from two months to six years old. Um, and we live in an upstairs apartment. Um, and in the summer it gets to be about 104 and sweltering. We do not have air conditioning because we do live in an older building. Um, and with the PSPS events, sometimes we don't even have access to a fan. 
the landscaping at our complex is rocks and um, wood chips. So there's really no soft place for my children to play. So we really do look to parks. Um, but, at, you know, again, when we're having more of these days that are in the hundreds, are, is the city considering ways that we can help children who do not have a yard to cool down? You know, uh, mm -hmm. the splash pad was taken out of Howarth Park. I understand that there's concerns about drought and that sort of thing, but I echo um, Laura, she had commented in the beginning, looking at demographics and where the families are and, you know, what their needs for resources are. And so I was hoping, um, one, is our splash pads an option? Because I don't know if they exist anywhere in the city with the exception of over by the fish. Um, or are there other options that we're looking at in order to help children be able to play and cool down outdoors? Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. I appreciate the, the comment. And we, um, I'm happy to report that at Finley Community or Aquatic Center, we are installing a spray ground there. So we'll have an additional spray ground in the city. There are certainly popular um, considerations and we, we hope to have that available not till 2023, but we're working through. There's a lot of um, engineering that goes on underground to make those happen. Uh, but I appreciate your comment and we'll definitely um, keep it as mind as in mind as we look at um, the options for us to move forward. And also the other thing too is when we do get over a certain temperature, we have options for cooling centers, uh, typically at Finley Community Center. So definitely keep an eye out for that. If it does get too hot, we do have space for you to be indoors in air conditioning um, when those days are really hot. They have to be really hot and also no electricity. Um, so that's a Sidebar to parks, uh, it's more of an, an emergency um, operation uh, when we get in those PSPS events, but definitely keep an eye out for that. And as far as spray grounds and parks, I appreciate the comment and we'll keep it uh, with our comments as we move forward and look at what we can do. Thank you. Our next caller is Adam Dominic, followed by SS. Adam, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Adam Dominic, we're not able to hear you. Sorry about that, I didn't unmute my, my uh, microphone. Uh, my name is Adam Dominic and I'm a, a resident of the Southwest uh, Quadrant here in Santa Rosa. Um, I came to Santa Rosa about six years ago, and uh, I, I kind of fell in love with, with Santa Rosa because all of the parks were pretty diverse. You know, you, you have a lot of different amenities that a lot of different activities that people can indulge in here. And it's it's pretty amazing. And um, I have a four year old now um, and a little one on the way. And just to have that diversity in the parks of to be able to take her to, you know, a lake or to um you know soccer fields or bocce courts or just you know all different kind of activities is really amazing um but i'm also part of the united flyers of sonoma the disc golf club and we hit a like i had spearheaded the initiative for the adopted green space over at uh, youth community park and it has made a huge impact on that on that park um it's it's kind of cleaned up a lot of the homeless encampments and it's you know kind of starting to beautify the park and a lot more folks are starting to to enjoy that park not only the the local community directly in that park but also residents from you know all the different quadrants in santa rosa um and also you know out of our out of our city and out of our county you know a lot of people come to play disc golf you know disc golfers are, are traveling folk and and you know if there's courses to play a lot of people will come and play them and i guess you know, my, my question that I was wondering, um, you know, I filled out the survey and there's a lot of questions about, you know, what existing amenities that you would like to see kind of repaired or replaced or fixed or cleaned up or um, whatever. But um, was there any um, thought or consideration of bringing new kind of activities such as disc golf and other things to our parks? Um, and that's, that's about all I have. Thank you. Sure, I, I really appreciate that. And I hope I heard the last bit of your question there, but um, uh, we, we are looking at, uh, we have heard from, I believe your group uh, several times and looking at opportunities to include 
include things like these through, throughout our park system. I mean, certainly uh, we'll take a look at what we can do with new parks. Um, this measure does not limit, limit us to expanding or repairing existing parks. Um, uh, there are, if you remember the slide with all of the, the map with all the trees on it, those are proposed new parks, although um, acquisition of, of, of a new park is not pending anywhere yet. We recently purchased um, additional land in to complete the Roseland Community Park in the Southwest, uh, but otherwise we don't have any major plans for creating new spaces, but certainly if we did, we would um, uh, we would reach out to the community in that area and have a full discussion about what should be included. And, and certainly I would invite your group to attend that. And I'm not sure if I answered your question entirely. So certainly if I didn't, feel free to chime back in and, and, and we'll go from there. Um, yeah, I guess I wasn't necessarily, you know, referring to, to new parks. Um, which I, I don't know if I understand if Measure M is fully for new parks or existing parks. Um, but uh, both, yeah, right. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, but but you know, bringing new activity to to like new activities to a park. Um, yeah, I, I guess you may have answered my question. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Our next speaker is SS, followed by Alma. SS, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Yeah, hi, sorry about that SS that uh, was working for my mobile today, but uh, my name is Sean Seiler. I am also uh, a member of the United Flyers of Sonoma. Uh, this is my third Measure M meeting and I'm really enjoying all the content that's coming about and all the great ideas for, you know, various open space, uh, you know, development. And, you know, I just want to piggyback on what uh, both Dr. Ben and, and Adam have discussed around you know, our involvement in the community, as well as, um, you know, how to, you know, take advantage uh, of, you know, the, you know, the great uh, resources that are available through Measure M and, you know, and, and help uh, not only grow the community, but also grow the engagement within the community. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, that our club will focus on is, you know, assisting in, um, you know, the, the maintenance and assisting in the, you know, community outreach to, you know, to further support not only disc golf, but, you know, but all activities that are shared within these types of spaces. Um, you know, we cohabitate typically with, uh, you know, hiking trails and, you know, we've had an abundance of folks from all age groups, very young to very old, um, ask about, you know, our sport and ask about uh, how to participate, where they can get started, um, you know, how to join the clinics that we're, we're partnering with the city to, to put on and, and Ben's going to be attending tomorrow. So, um, you know, all of these things are, you know, are exceptional to, um, you know, to, to create this engagement. And, and we're happy to be a partner with, um, you know, your group, as well as, you know, the city directly to, you know, to ensure, a, you know, a safe place to play for all age groups. Um, you know, one thing that, uh, that, that I think is important to note is, you know, as we, you know, look at these, um, you know, spaces and, you know, in the, in the vast area that we have in, in the southeast, um, you know, as well as all over the quadrants of the city, you know, it's, it's very minimal impact to the land to, you know, install a, a disc golf course uh, when the disc golf course is installed and, and the folks that, uh, you know, that participate in that community play that course, you know, we're often out there, you know, picking up trash, uh, you know, knocking down weeds. We do, you know, work parties as a group to, to get out there and uh, prevent fire danger for, you know, for open space areas like that by, you know, doing mowing and, um, you know, damaging weeds and things like that, that, that come up, uh, infestation weeds, you know, like all of that stuff is, is things that, um, you know, are promoted by, you know, by this sport and, you know, the ability to, uh, you know, to engage the community in that way. So, uh, you know, a little bit of information about our club, the inventor of the disc golf basket and the inventor of, uh, you know, the disc style Frisbee that, you know, that we actually use for the sport uh, was actually, uh, you know, a resident of this area as well and built courses in uh, Highland Springs up in Lake County, uh, you know, assisted in, you know, some of the course designs and developments for, you know, for our area. And, uh, you know, when he, when he was working for Whammo and invented all of these things, um, you know, he really, you know, created a, an initiative for, you know, for all of us to really enjoy. So 
uh, you know, I thank you guys for putting together this platform and, and allowing us to have a voice. And, you know, we're really looking forward to make a partnership and, um, you know, engage with, you know, everybody on this call and invite you out, out to play disc golf. Great. Thank you, Sean. Our next, our next speaker is Alma. Alma, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Good evening, my name is Alma Magallon. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to hear our feedback this evening. I have been a resident of the South Park neighborhood for over 30 years now, and I am now raising my two young children in this neighborhood. My son is eight and my daughter is two. As a mother, I want my children to feel safe at our local neighborhood park. And sadly, that is not the case when it comes to the local park here of Martin Luther King Jr. The park is not maintained and we have little to no lighting and we have a very outdated playground. And as you heard this evening, our children are limited to the access that we currently have to our soccer field and our basketball courts as the city has partnered with local organizations to rent these out during the times that children would normally be out of school wanting to take the time to spend and play at our local neighborhood park. For years, South Park has been labeled as an at-risk neighborhood, and yet it continues to be underserved. We have a bike path that has little to no lighting, and because of this, we see the negative impact from the activities that happen along the path. As we look at how these funds can be allocated, I urge you to consider how improving our neighborhood park will impact and improve the quality of life of our working families with young children here in South Park. And I remind you that this has been a long time in need and we now have an opportunity to make a difference. I once again, thank you for your time and I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Alma. And I, I think that is the last hand raised. Is that right? I'll turn to our host to double check. That is correct. And is there any questions from the Q&A that uh, we need to answer here? We just have one um, and it is, how has the Santa Rosa city change of having a park and rec department shifted to public works affected the availability of resources and maintenance workers? From what I understand, those workers are now stretched thin with needs being expanded to non park and recreation needs. Will measure M funds be available to assist with this critical need? So uh, thanks for that question. And uh, yes, the Park planning, my section, has, as well as park maintenance, have moved to public works. And I'm hearing um, there's a great success in seeing the combination of those teams uh, from, within, from within those teams where they can leverage each other's needs and um, combine street worker, streets, uh, street maintenance workers with park maintenance workers to combine to go do special projects within the city to help. Um, for instance, we recently combined a couple of uh, staff members from different maintenance groups and we have assigned them to the Prince Greenway and it's making a huge difference. I keep hearing about how great it's looking down there lately. So if you haven't had a chance to check that out, definitely do that. Um, and certainly these funds can be used to fund additional maintenance of the city. That is one of the categories. So um, we're happy to hear that. and. Um, we can't wait to look at some of the results from all of the surveys in the next couple of weeks. So I appreciate your, that comment. And then um, with that, I know our host has some questions and I also offer it up to her if she has any comments as well. Uh, Annette? Thank you. I have received a couple of comments from neighbors who asked me to read them to, at tonight's meeting. The first is from John Farrick, who has been a South Park resident for 47 years. He said he would like to propose that two paddle tennis courts be built at Martin Luther King Jr. Park in South Park. Paddle tennis is a popular recreational venue and there is only one court currently available in Santa Rosa at a private health club. This sport appeals to a lot, a wide range of people, young and old, male and female, as well as the disabled. South Park has no tennis options at this time. And there's, there was a tennis court at the corner of Aston and Henley, but it was uh, replaced by a parking lot. There are seniors who can no longer take part in physically exertive activities who could participate in paddle tennis. 
Tennis, paddle tennis courts will fit in well with the existing soccer field and basketball courts and provide an alternative sport available at Martin Luther King Park. The Sonoma County public will be introduced to a sport that is increasingly popular wherever courts are built and made available to the general population. Paddle tennis advocates and participants will bring a stabilizing effect to the park in general. And once the courts are established, players like to help with the maintenance and upkeep of the courts. Paddle tennis courts are much less expensive than traditional tennis courts. And there's a contractor in Northern California who specializes in building them. This project is much needed due to the isolation and stress created by COVID-19 pandemic and the interactive nature of the sport itself will have a positive impact on all. That was from John Ferrick. Um, thank, from you, thank you to John via Annette. Uh, and you have uh, you have a few more, right? Just a few, yep. Okay. Uh, Jenny, Jenny Orbino is another South Park resident. And she has asked if we could get some lighting and trash receptacles along the Newell bike path. It has become kind of a gang invested neighborhood right now. There's a ton of graffiti along there and there's a, lots of um, illegal dumping going on. So she feels if there was lighting in there that would help the um, issue. And also if there was trash receptacles it probably wouldn't all end up on the ground there. That was my second one. The third one is, um, I would also like to reiterate about the park permit process right now where South Park having both the uh, basketball courts and the soccer fields rented out all of the facilities to outside people outside of the South Park area and leaving no facilities for the kids who live here to play on. So they have no access to um, the soccer fields, which they use a lot, and they have no access to the basketball courts. I was there the other night, they were kids were out there at nine o'clock at night because they can't get there during the day. So it, one request is if they must be rented out, could you at least leave some to the residents so that they always have access to the, this is the only park we have in this neighborhood. The um, third and last is from myself and I would like to see some covered area on the park. Currently there's no place where you can get out of the sun there. So it would be nice to have some uh, covered pavilion and also a, um, a some kind of water feature because there's nothing around at all where kids can go and get wet and safely in a park. So I would like to request that. And I believe that is it for me. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Annette. I appreciate that. And thanks to everybody that had some questions and comments. It's always great. I'm going to look to our host one more time if any if there's any additional questions that have come up. I see no other hands raised. OK, is there anything uh, else that we need to answer? Oh, go ahead. Um, Sheila and Steve missed the answer about their question about parks and maintenance staff. Oh, <laughs> okay, great. Yes, the so the funds can be used to fund additional either park maintenance staff or contracted maintenance. So if that is something um, you all want to see, and I heard a lot of that at all of our meetings, so hopefully there was a line item in question 10 uh, to prioritize spending for maintenance. And um, if you have neighbors or anybody else that still needs to take the survey, uh, you can let them know. Uh, but absolutely, these funds can uh, be used for maintenance. And I'm going to look back to our host one more time. Anything else? No, we're, I think that we're good. Mary Lou? No, we have no other hands. Thank you. Great. Let's go to the next slide. And thanks again to everybody for participating. And I know it ends up being a long evening, but it's an important topic. And I, I certainly appreciate uh, all your time and energy. Um, I, I know how it is to have busy lives and not have time for this, but I do appreciate you being here. And certainly uh, we want to keep the conversation going. So here's a way to get in touch with us. Um, Emily Ander, our host working behind the scenes, is actually taking on a large part of this project. And her email is eander at srcity.org. And her phone number is 707-543-3774. If you need to have a specific question or have anything you need to say, you can, you can contact Emily. Uh, the, other way to get in touch with us um, is to go to our srcity.org parks for all website. Um, there's a wealth of information there. 
surveys, um, videos, and presentations from all the former meetings we have had. And all future meetings will be listed on there as well so that you can keep, um, keep informed and keep in touch with us. Um, and we would, we would uh, be grateful for anything you have, any comments you have uh, going into the future. And so I'm gonna look back to our host one last time to see if you have any comments or follow-up um, as we close out the evening. I see no hands raised. Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, our host, Annette, <laughs> from, <laughs> from South Park CBIs. Uh, we have no more questions. We'd just like to thank you for giving us this opportunity to say what we hope to happen here in South Park. And we really appreciate all that you guys do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Annette. And thanks for everybody that attended tonight. And um, I appreciate it. Have a great evening. Thank you. Good night.